My name is Dr. Sukhpal Singh Gill and I'm president of Sick Doctors and Dentists Association UK. Face masks have never been more important than the current times for the protection of health workers. Guidelines for health and dental service providers have advocated facial shaving to fit the best masks for the protection of some health workers who work in some of the most riskiest environments. Sadly, this has had an unfortunate consequence for some health workers who are now placed in a difficult position to choose between looking after their patients or maintaining an important article of their faith. Alternatives suggested by the health and safety executive in such situations include highly specialized equipment like uh, powered air respirators. These can be quite expensive and can be at quite a significant cost to the NHS or dental services providers. An additional challenge of using this type of kit is that unfortunately it's not manufactured for some types of work, like for example magnification using loops for microvascular surgery or for dentists to carry out specialist dental work. We believe COVID-19 crisis has exposed a number of health inequalities which were already there. And in order to address this specific health inequality, uh, my colleague Dr. Rajinder Singh from Manchester has devised an innovative solution to this problem. I'm Dr. Rajinder Singh, a transplant surgeon in Manchester. As you know, recently I had used uh, a Tata technique to cover the beard to wear an FFP3 mask and pass the qualitative fit test in NHS. And uh, we had subsequently written to the health and safety executive uh, through various organizations, Sikh and Muslim, to see if they are able to endorse this. We are currently engaging with them and it was seen that it would be useful to subject our technique to more robust uh, test methods. Uh, in line with that, we conducted a pilot study which was kindly funded by the Sikh Doctor and Dentist Association and I was helped also by Dr. Hardeep Safri. Uh, my name is Dr. Hardeep Safri. I'm a general dental practitioner, a dental supervisor and an RP fit tester. Fit testing relies on a simple fact that a mask or a respirator is not going to fully protect you unless your face fits the mask properly. It needs to have a seal all around. And there are two main methods to assess the quality of that seal, qualitative and quantitative. They're both approved by a health and safety executive and must be performed by a competent tester. The qualitative testing relies on the person's sense of taste or smell. The way it works is that the person is asked to wear a mask and a hood and then the tester would spray these strong tasting solutions and then the person would be asked to do some very um, simple movements to simulate normal working conditions and this will go on for a few minutes. So if the, pa if the person can taste the solution, that would mean that they have failed the fit test. On the other hand, the quantitative test is quite different. This type of testing relies on uh, the particle counting and that is what determines the quality of the seal. It's a more accurate way of doing a fit test. Again, the wearer is asked to, to wear, a, wear a mask and uh, they don't have a hood with this. It's actually connected to a, um, a sensor. Uh, the, uh, and whilst a person is doing all these various uh, simple exercises, uh, the, the sensor is counting the different particles and it's comparing it to the number of particles which are challenging it. So, and, and gives you a figure at the end which is called the fit factor. And that fit factor relates to the effectiveness of the seal between the mask and the patient's face. And the fit tester was Paul Salisbury, who is a reputed and one of the most uh, experienced uh, fit testers of UK, who also, I think, advises the HSE. The HSE were aware of this. In the test, uh, uh, nine people were subjected to quantitative testing. We were five good six and all five good six passed the fit test. Uh, we had four ladies. Of them, three were able to pass the quantitative fit test. And one of the three who passed had to take two attempts with different masks. Therefore, it was seen that 
when we upgraded uh, the Tata to this uh, uh, rubber elastic sheet, it was able to compress the beard and we had excellent outcomes. Uh, plan is that we will engage with the HSE further on this. They are aware of that and they are keen to see the final detailed report which we also plan to publish. I once again would like to thank you and all the organizations involved and their support. Hey, my name is Professor Gert Randawa. I'm Professor of Diversity and Public Health here at the University of Bedfordshire. Two of the core fundamental values of the NHS as outlined in the NHS Constitution are those of dignity and respect. And what we see with the proposed Singh Tata solution are that the dignity and respect of staff are maintained whilst allowing people to be protected and wearing full PPE. And I think I would commend this solution that's been proposed because it offers cultural competence. It's been developed in dialogue and partnership, not just within the Sikh community, but also has been consulted upon within the Jewish and the Muslim community. So please take a look at this solution as I think it's a fantastic example of offering dignity and respect and safety. Hi, I'm Dr. Muhammad Qasim. I'm a consultant in respiratory medicine and lead for infection prevention and control at Manchester Foundation Trust. My colleague, Mr. Singh, has come up with a culturally competent technique of wearing an FFP3 mask over the beard and he passed. As a hospital lead for infection control, I have supported and approved this technique, which is famously called Singh Tata technique. Uh, we are engaging with the Health and Safety Executive England uh, in order to seek their approval for wider use of this technique. My name is Dr. Gagandeep Singhalg and I am a consultant medical physician and the founder and president of the British Sikh Doctors Organisation. One of the main issues we saw impacted beard wearing healthcare workers. Orthodox and observant Sikh, Muslim and Jewish healthcare workers wear beards for religious reasons. For Sikhs, the beard is respected and cared for like any other part of the body. It makes them complete and is a strong link with their spirituality. So when healthcare workers were asked to shave their beards to have a fit test, this really put many of our colleagues in a difficult position. We thank the NHS Trust to do their very best to source respirator hoods for the healthcare workers who could not pass fit testing. In some cases, colleagues were moved to areas where a respirator face piece was not required. We understand all steps taken were to protect healthcare workers and the patients we care for. However, for those that were deployed to other areas, it left a sense of guilt. Some were no longer able to carry out the work that they were experts in. It also has had an impact on the training of some healthcare staff. Mr. Rijan the Singh, a transplant surgeon from the north of England, has come up with an innovative adaption which has allowed him and a number of healthcare workers who wear beards to pass fit testing while wearing an FFP3 mask. This is called the Singh Tata technique. This technique could be a solution for many healthcare workers. It is cost effective and simple. It could prevent our colleagues from being put in a tough position where they have to choose between their faith and their vocation. We ask that the Sing Tata is included in the fit test and want to work with the health safety executive to help them understand the technique. Let's work together to make fit testing culturally competent, more inclusive and more equal. My name is Dr. Sukhdev Singh. I have been a GP in the NHS for the past 35 years in Birmingham and I'm chairman of the Sikh Doctors Association. The UK population is approximately 70% from a BAME background. But in the NHS, the largest workforce in Europe, 44% of the workforce is a BAME background. This is therefore a significant problem as a large proportion of that BAME group are from a Sikh, Muslim, Jewish background and others who wear a beard. What has really troubled us is how high the failure rate with the current fit test has been in those with beards. If you just carry on the standard way. Dr. Rajinder Singh has developed a novel solution, the Singh Tata method, that we feel should now be part of the national fit test as an alternative to those with a beard where they cannot pass in the usual way. And this will provide a safe and effective solution and allow those professionals to work to their maximum ability in the correct setting and therefore not to deny the NHS of a reduced workforce due to failing of the fit test. 
this is a sensitive solution and a culturally competent solution. And we hope you take this plea seriously and improve the current HSE fit test and make it fit for purpose for 2020 and beyond. Hello, this is Lord Ranger, Chairman of the British Sikh Association. I am told that there's a mandatory clause for surgeons to shave their beard in order to perform a fit test of wearing a respirator. This is causing a great deal of concern among those doctors who wear their beard for religious purposes. I'm delighted to learn that Dr. Rajinder Singh, a transplant surgeon, has come up with a unique idea, which is inexpensive and very easy to use. It is just called Tata. So I will recommend that the Singh Tata is made available to all those who do not want to shave for any reason. So therefore, it is a good news and I congratulate Dr. Singh for coming up with this novel idea. So thank you, best of luck, and we are so proud of all the doctors who go the extra mile for our safety in this COVID pandemic time. We feel the Singh Tata technique provides a practical, cost-effective and safe solution for many bearded individuals currently working in the NHS. In light of our pilot study findings, we hope that the Health and Safety Executive may review its existing uh, guidelines in regards to removal of facial hair prior to uh, fit testing a face mask. If indeed an individual goes on to fail the fit test, then current guidelines are adequate and alternative form of respiratory protective equipment should be sourced. In this manner, we make our existing guidelines much more culturally competent and workable for the masses.